Not an ideal day in Stillwater, Oklahoma for the Wildcats. They fall 75-72 to Oklahoma State, a team that had only won one Big 12 game up until this point, was easily the worst team in this league, doesn't have a really significant player on their roster, and one of the two that you would fear coming into this game, his labrum is torn. He was not going to play, probably won't play for the rest of the season, K-State, you'd think, hey, maybe there's a sense of urgency here. You've lost all these games in a row, and it feels like NCAA tournament is slipping away from you. Didn't seem to have that today either. The Cats fall 75-72, and they kind of waste a big day from Tyler Perry. He had another 20-point game. He shot the ball well, came alive for him in the second half, but nobody else was able to step up offensively outside of the big three. And the bigger story was this defense was non-existent today, and that led to a lot of K-State's problems. Yeah, so the, Jerome Tang said it best afterwards. He said the second half, they just didn't guard. And it, that guarding is all about effort. I know that people are probably a little bit upset that Casey went to a zone and the zone didn't seem to work. But they, it's not like man-to-man was doing them any, any better. There were multiple times where in man-to-man, Casey was just getting beat on a straight line drive where there was nothing real too fancy that Oklahoma State did. They were just driving right past the K-State guards especially. And then it happened in, in the zone defense, too. So it was kind of a pick your poison. It didn't seem to matter what K-State did defensively. They just didn't seem like they wanted to guard. And that's, that's two kind of games in a row where you've seen really bad body language, especially on the defensive end. And, and it, that's, again, where you waste another big game for Tyler Perry. And you just have a lot of more questions than answers of this team because the season seems to be kind of slipping away at this point. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, especially with Kansas on the horizon on Monday. And Jerome Tang all season long has said, hey, 9-9 in the Big 12 gets you in. Well, K-State's 4-5 and five now after being 4-1. and one. And you start to think, okay, nine games left. Who are they against? Well, two of them are against Kansas. One of them is against Iowa State, who is right now playing like – the second best team in this league probably you have a couple against BYU you have a road trip to Texas who is starting to find some life and obviously we know that there is talent there it becomes tough to find five wins for this team and the games that you think might be gimmies like West Virginia at home West Virginia is turning it on right now and they just got Jesse Edwards back who's made a big difference for him a road trip to Cincinnati that can has been tough for good teams this year It's tough to see the path right now for K-State, especially the way that they're playing. And I think today you got the offensive game you wanted out of your main three guys. I mean, I think it's the first time all year, really, where it feels like all those guys were going. I think they totaled 50 points, Kaluma, Carter, and Perry. The issue is now Carter and uh, Kaluma fixed their turnover problem, not as prevalent today. Tyler Perry did have five of them early on. But the real issue does come back to the defense, and you talk about it didn't matter. Zone or man, this team was not playing it well today, and I just chalk that up to what I've been concerned about this team all season. I don't think they're smart enough basketball-wise to do some things out there, and that has held them back a lot, and I think that's what we saw today was this team is too slow and not smart enough to play zone effectively. You might be able to throw a wrinkle and get some teams occasionally, but they couldn't do it for a sustained amount of time. The closeouts were slow. They didn't fight through screens. And that's when, in the middle of the second half, we saw Jerome Tang get as fiery with his team as I have ever seen him in these two seasons now that he's been at K-State. He lit into him, and that was basically all he did during the timeout, which at this stage, that's all you can do to this K-State team because schematically, I don't think there's anything that you can do to change the way they play. So much of what is holding them back is either sheer talent on the roster, but mainly it's what we talked about after the Oklahoma game, It's give a damn, and they didn't appear to give a damn today because if you lose a game to a team like Oklahoma State who just got their butts beat by Kansas earlier this week. And lost their best player. Yeah, yeah. So you have all these things. Like, you're on a three-game losing streak. You should be motivated. It didn't seem to matter for K-State until the end. And, look, the offense, that's a step in the right direction. I give them props on that. But at the end of the day, yeah, at the end of the day, the defense can't suffer because of it. And you have to find a way to get that balance. And that's almost where you start to think, like, offense has the vanity numbers where, you know, guys are going to get theirs. And you'll look at a box score and say, Tyler Perry, good game. Cam Carter, good game. All this stuff. But at the end of the day, you look at what they did defensively. It was not a good game for K-State. And this has turned into 
a not very enjoyable season the way things are going because at the very least you could have stomached if this team missed the NCAA tournament, but they battled and you felt like, hey, they were in these games. They didn't lose the ones that they weren't supposed to. Now they're just losing every game. They're losing the ones that they should lose, the ones they shouldn't. And it's, I mean, we've said it enough already. It's soul-searching time. We're way past that. This is just a team that has to decide if they care. And maybe this was the wake-up call, but I would have thought that a 20-point blowout loss to an okay Oklahoma team at home would have been the wake-up call. And I'm really not looking forward to seeing what takes place on Monday night in Bramlage. I mean, I, I get it. Tyler Perry did score 20, but I don't know if you can call this a good game for Tyler Perry. He didn't score again in the first half. He took the most shots out of anybody in the first half and was still 0 of 7. So, I mean, it, it's hard for me to call it a good game for Tyler Perry because he still hasn't put a full game together yet, and we're 22 games into the season now. So it's hard for me to go there, but it was a step again in the right direction in the second half, at least. And we can talk about how good the offense was in the second half. And K-State scored 45 points, shot 56% from the field, 43% from the three-point line. Do you know what the score was in the second half? Uh, I think Oklahoma State, well, they ended up winning it by a point, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oklahoma State still won the second half because it didn't matter because K-State couldn't guard a soul yeah. in the second half and didn't look like they wanted to guard, which is even worse. And it's the first time that we've had a, a K-State press conference where Jerome Tang kind of called out his own team. He said that they didn't play very hard and didn't deserve to win. Yeah. And that every 50-50 ball, it, it felt like it was a 75-25 ball that Oklahoma State was going to get it. And there was multiple possessions where K-State had guys that got lost away from the ball defensively. Or a shot went up in the air and a K-State player didn't even, even yeah. care or look to see if there was a rebound possibility. So... It, it's past thrill searching time. It's time to like, do you really want to go out like this if you're Tyler Perry? Do you want to be on this team that didn't make the tournament and really took a step back when you were supposed to really take a step forward if you're Cam Carter? And if you're Arthur Kaluma, like this is this was supposed to be your stop before you go to the NBA. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do in this last half of the season? Because we're halfway through Big 12 play. What are you going to do to claw your way to the NCAA tournament. You need somebody like a Marquise Noel last year who you knew that the give a damn level was always going to be at 100. This team has guys that sometimes it does it looks like they want to be anywhere but on a basketball court. Yep. No, nope, very true. I mean, you, you need a guy that will step up and I just don't think that this team has that. And I, you know, you, you think about we talked about during football season where when things were kind of going tough for this team, I just don't know that they had a vocal leader in certain spots. And this team, I just I don't think they, they do. I, I, Cam Carter's a soft-spoken guy. Tyler Perry, I, I don't know what to expect from him there. Uh, Arthur Kaluma, I mean, he sticks up for his guys, but there, there's a difference between sticking up for your guys, but you also have to hold them accountable. I would liken it to, you know, with my brothers – I was terrible to them as, as a brother growing up. Like, they were younger brothers, and I was going to fight with them and do all these other things. But I was always quick whenever somebody else was picking on my brothers to stick up for them because that's my brother. Only I get to mess with you. And I just wonder if Arthur Kaluma actually has that in him where he can say to himself, hey, these are my guys. Let me step up and get you right and get in your face. And if you don't have that on a team, it makes it tough. A couple of notes from Jerome Tank's press conference afterwards. David Gasson missed uh, the first half with a knee injury. They said that they would have liked to have not played him, but Gasson kept begging Marco Bourne to get into the game. So that's why he came in only in the second half. Um, to your point about what Jerome Tang said about, you know, kind of calling out his guys, we saw the timeout. But also after the game, he said something very telling, and that was he talked about Oklahoma State's players went out and won them that game. And then, you know, when I followed up and I asked him, like, hey, on Tuesday you said that that loss was on you. Who was this one on? He said, always on me. You know, the losses are always on me. That was coach speak. But I think we got the real answer from Jerome Tang, and that's why, like, when things aren't going right, you, you do want to blame everybody. You want to blame the players. You want to blame the coaches. There are elements to this team's train wreck season right now that are definitely on the coaching staff. The end of clock situations, that is on them for still occurring. But at the end of the day, like I just think Jerome Tang is at a loss for answers. And I think that's why we saw him kind of turn to more public anger today. That's, not, that's normally not his style, 
It was never his style last year. This year he's avoided it at all turns. I think he's trying to exhaust every option he has, and it's still not working. At the, end of the, to the, at the end of the day, that just comes back to a team that doesn't seem to care too much. It, it was interesting to me, uh, the portion of the press conference where he said that this K State team isn't good enough to choose to win they want to compete. Yeah. And I think that that kind of says a lot, and it, it's true. There aren't many teams, because it's not just a K-State thing, there aren't many teams that can just pick and choose, hey, in this league, that are like, hey, I, we want to win this game. Like, we need to show up and play well. You have to play well every night, or else you're going to get your butt kicked. Yeah. And, it, and it, it's happened now four games in a row, and you wonder kind of where the, the mental psyche of this team is going into Monday. Because this is, this is a quick turnaround, and you've played pretty terribly in the last two games, and now... You, or yeah, even the last three, you have KU coming to town. So what, what's your response? How do you get how do you get back on track? Yeah, I, I did laugh at an Oklahoma State fan in the elevator on our way up from the press conference. Asked <laughs> where we were from. We're like, oh yeah, we, we cover K State. He said, well, played a good game. <laughs> I, I just laughed. I was like, no, they did not. <laughs> like it was a close game. It probably the end was enjoyable for a neutral viewer, but. Uh, that was far from a good performance for, for K-State. It, Offensively, things to take as a positive, but the defense has regressed in a mighty way. It, it's one of those where sometimes people get confused between a good game as a close game and a good yeah. game as quality, because yeah. that wasn't a quality game for, honestly, either team. Because yeah. Oklahoma State, it's not like they lit the world on fire offensively. They, they got a lot of warm-up jump shots in the second half. But step in the right direction for Mike Boynton's team because the last five years they normally don't even hit the open ones. So uh, he at least has shooters this year, and clearly they made K-State pay. So 75-72, Oklahoma State wins it here in Stillwater. K-State now 4-5 and five in Big 12 play, and who knows what comes next. We'll try and dissect it all a little bit deeper, bring in a, a different opinion with KSU underscore fan who is always – a little bit more enlightened and, uh, I don't know, has, has maybe a better perspective than we do on the Sunday show tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that over on the KSO YouTube page. And then get all of your post-game reaction stuff over at kstateonline.com. And also, don't forget that uh, we have a football schedule that came out. There is a lot of anticipation for that. Football coverage not slowing down anytime soon. Recruiting news, whatever else coming your way. So uh, if you are thinking, boy, I don't even want to think about this basketball team right now, there's plenty of football stuff for you over at KSO as well. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online.